I'll get into the specific of what you will be learning in this course in a couple of minutes. But before that, I would like to introduce to you some fact about the business environment of today and we operate in. Now, can you guess the world's largest bookseller today? Well, it's Amazon, a technology company. Can you guess the world's largest direct marketing platform today? And probably you are correct, they are Google and Facebook, again a tech companies. Sony and BMG do not dominate the music landscape today anymore. Rather than, they only provide the content to technology companies like Apple, Spotify, Ghana, Baidu, etc. Technology companies like WhatsApp and Skype have shaved off nearly $386 billion of revenue from global telecom companies like China Telecom, Vodafone, Singtel, Bharti. So again, telco company in today's world are WhatsApp and Skype. The financial industries have been visibly transformed by technology companies such as PayPal, Square, etc. And still more disruption seems to be in order from companies that are leveraging technologies like blockchain and Bitcoin, which is there to change the very face of traditional financial services as we know it. No wonder Mark Anderson quipped a couple of years ago that software is eating up the world. And it's just not the industry's fundamental business function such as R&D and product development are being digitalized. As General Electric CEO Jeffrey Imlet noted in his letters to shareholders in 2013, every industrial company will become a software company. And that needs vision of firms require a shift in thinking about IT. And it requires transformation of the IT function. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, in the past, IT was a support function in firms. It was a cost center. The organization was peripheral to business strategy. It focused on automation of transaction intensive processes and clearly it was a cost center. However, in the competitive environment of today, IT moves center stage. It is central to business strategy, product differentiation and market performance of firm. So what is digital transformation? And this is the Wikipedia definition. Digital transformation, also known as DT or DX, is the use of new, fast and frequently changing digital technology to solve problems. This often uses emerging technologies like cloud computing. Well, this definition is true to some extent and I tend to agree. But one thing that's missing out of this definition is that digital transformation is also about people, organization and culture as it is about any given technology. Because we can provide best technology in the world to a management and rest of the company but if the organization is not defined in a way to leverage that technology, effectively, then they are not going to gain the same kind of benefit that they potentially could. Example, if you have transformed your on-premise application to cloud environment for partners and customer, but you still use the traditional change management tools that takes weeks before a change, then are you really getting benefit of the transformation? Well, I don't think so. You will get, get or see the real benefit of the transformation. It may not be the beneficial business solution and over a period of time, you will start thinking that you are spending the money on nothing. So talking of technology, isn't it fascinating how fast technology has evolved over a period of time? When I was a kid, no one around me had a cell phone. We used to have landline. And these were only reserved for important or urgent uses. There is this incident I could recall as late as in 1980s in Indian parliament when an MP rose to protest the frequent telephone breakdown and the general woeful performance by a public sector monopoly. The then telecommunication minister replied in a lordly manner. In a developing country, he declared telephones are luxury, not a right. And now, not that many years later, telecommunication has broken the socio-economic status. Everyone has a mobile smartphone and now even a farmer in a remote village in India can use mobile phone to check the market prices and make calculated decision and can also do bank transaction. We shop, we chat, we play, we learn online. We cannot imagine our lives without internet. Within 15-20 years, the digital has not only changed our personal lives, but also fully transformed the business world. And it has impacted all industries. 
So the statement communication is a luxury and not right has changed to communication as a basic need like air and water. And if you see in the last few years, digital mobile technology has progressed exponentially. Actually, when something grows exponentially, it is quite powerful. Let me tell you the power of exponential with the story. Once a king who was fond of game of chess lost the game to his minister and he asked his minister what he would like to get as a reward. The smart minister to ensure he doesn't hurt the king told he just want to have one grain of rice for the first square of chessboard, two grains for the second square, four grains for the third and then eight grains and so on until the 64 squares are exhausted. King thought that's just a small reward. But he was missing the power of exponential. Do you know how much rise did the minister take? Pause and think. Now if you do the calculation, you will see it was 18.4 quintillion grains of rice, which is in the same order of magnitude as the total earth biomass. So that's the power of exponential. So how does digital technology related to this story? Well, because interestingly, digital technology in the last few decades have progressed just in the same way as the number of grains along the chessboard exponentially. And the aspect that led to this exponential growth can be boiled down to three things, processing power, communication and storage. So the high processing power of devices, computers and fast communication with a high storage is what it makes or fuels the digital transformation. Now, as with the previous example of chess story, the king mind was not capable of capturing the magnitude of how the grain could add up over the chessboard. Similarly, for us, it is the same with exponential advancement of technology. We know that technology develops rapidly. However, as the human intuition is tuned to seeing linear development, we tend to always underestimate the progress. Technology develops rapidly and exponentially. But human thinks it's a linear development and underestimate it. It is not surprising, therefore, that companies also tend to underestimate or even completely blind to the impact of digital technology. If the companies develop linearly and technology evolve exponentially, as shown in the graph, we see a gap between the two, a gap between companies' actual value delivery and what would be possible technology-wise. And this gap is widening very quickly over the time. The gap is often filled with innovative startups using technology to satisfy customer needs in a very different way, a way incumbent players were unable to see or even worse, saw and couldn't fully understand. Let's try to understand this by comparing Netflix and Blockbuster. Both were into movie CD or cassettes renting business. In case of Netflix, with the technology advancement, try to reinvent itself, first by shipping CD, then by streaming digital content to the customer's home. Blockbuster never evolved its business with advanced in technology and paid a heavy price for this tendency to underestimate the trend. Now, why does company undergoes this digital transformation? And the top three answers to it is customer, customer, and well again, customer. Well, I cannot more overemphasize that how much important customer is for organization to undergo digital or business transformation. So the why factor of the business transformation should include customer and how you are able to engage more effectively with the customer. So coming back to the chart we have seen in the previous section where we have discussed how new innovation companies are born or reborn when there is a gap between the company's actual value delivery and what would be possible technology-wise. And all the new age company that you see here, be it Alibaba, Grab, Uber, Skype, Netflix and other companies who have successfully transformed in their business are all trying to enhance the customer experience and their focus is customer. From my perspective and direct experience, the business who could make better relationship with their customer, create stronger customer experience, being able to engage more effectively with their customers, create loyalty to the customer likely to be the business that wins. How you engage customer in early product life cycle, 
how you get their feedback on new releases of the product or on new updates or how do you reward the customer so that they spend more on your business these are some of the clear opportunity of business and digital transformation and that's not easy thing to do undertaking a digital transformation is one of the difficult task for any organization so the first thing as an organization you need to do is to evaluate where the organization stands today and have a path of what it need to be successfully transformed using technology most of the company are scared of failure and do not undertake digital transformation but as the saying goes failure is not fatal but failure to change might be trying out and failing is one thing but not trying and failing guarantees you to lose and these are the examples of some of the failure through lack of transformation blockbuster which was a movie rental shop was replaced by netflix netflix came up with a better option where customer can get video and return without going to store and they revolutionized and transformed with online content streaming perfect example of transformation sears and barnes and nobles an american company both are in the retail space with the latter in book space now they fail to anticipate the change coming in from places like amazon and as a result they have gone bankrupt or reduced their footprint lack of transformation in 5 to 10 years could impact your business in negative way keep in mind the number of years depends it could be 2 5 10 or it could be just next year it depends if one of your competitor did the transformation next year and then you don't have 5 years so this is something to think of as an organization <laughs> <laughs>